Let's go over interactive components, what they are, when and why you should use them. It is kind of obvious from the name, but interactive components are a subset of components. And if you're not sure what components in Figma are, make sure to check this video that is also linked in the description to understand what components are, because it's an essential principle to understand if you wanna take full advantage of Figma. But for those of you that already know what components are, you might have noticed that we have quite a bunch of them here in this project. And we are going to take one of these components. I think the best one would be this button component that we are using here across the website to illustrate the principle of interactive components and how they work in the final outcome. And also, if you want to learn how to design a website in Figma, make sure to check the playlist linked in the description below. It's a completely free course on designing a website in Figma. All of this from scratch. So interactive components are components where you specify any type of interaction or something, some kind of an action happening within the component. So let's say that you create a component called button and then you reuse this component across your website exactly as you can see right here. So we have a button component here, here, here and here and also in these features cards. It's present all across the website basically wherever we use a button, right? So this is a very typical scenario. Interactive components allow you to specify that, for example, when you hover over this button, it changes states. And why you wanna do that? Well, for example, you wanna include a hover state to your button. And now it becomes very apparent why you should use components across your projects because since all of these are instances of this component, whenever we make a change here, including making this component interactive, this change is gonna be present across all these instances. So if we add a hover state, a hover interaction here, we are also adding a hover interaction here, 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 and everywhere where we use this button. Right, so it's quite powerful. It's great for replicating behaviors. Now let me actually create this interactivity. So when we select this component and go to prototype, you can see that there are no connections, meaning there is no interactive stuff happening, no prototyping stuff happening. But we can change that. We can select this first button state, and then you can see that we have a we have a property called importance. You could also call this, you know, type. We have uh, importance default and no background. So uh, let me create another variant of this by alt and dragging this button. Uh, and I don't think we need to create another variant, another value for the importance property. We need to create a new property altogether. And I think that could be state. So let me select this button and then click plus and create new property. This new property is gonna be a variant property that's gonna be called state, right? State, create property. And of course, these, both of these under state, they're gonna be default. But with this one, the state is going to be hover. So we, are, we have created a, a situation where when we use an instance of this component and also differentiate this hover state somehow, for example, making it gray, uh, you can see that we can now choose the importance right, no background, default, or importance three, but we can go for hover, default hover. And actually, let me set the importance of this to default. Now we can just change this by going to default hover, right? There is no such thing as importance three anymore. It's just default or no background, which makes sense, right? You get either default, no hover, right? So default, or you get no background, and the default, there's no hover yet, or you can get default and hover. And that's what we have right now. So we have created an additional state for this button. Um, it also has this, it also has the button text component property where you can change stuff, right? You can change stuff going from default to hover. So that's great. But how do we actually make this work as a hover button? So let me go to prototype with this default button highlighted and then connect the first initial default variant to this 
hover variant. And we, we're going to go for while hovering, change to importance default state hover, right? And the animation in this case is going to be instant. So right now I can select this button and we can make it, for example, blue. Right? These, we have created these color tokens in the, one of the latest episodes of designing a website in Figma. So if you, you want to know how to create these and all these textiles, make sure to check playlist designing a website in Figma. So right now, what we did, we basically specified a behavior for all of these. Now let me launch the prototype and click reset. And if I now hover over this button, it's going to turn blue. But not only this one, but also this one this one and this one. So we have created with this, this needs to be fixed by the way, we have created an interactive component across our website that is going to be reflected every time you hover over an instance of this. And we could also, to finalize this and to maintain consistency, we could duplicate this state, right? and go for hover on this one as well, turn this one to a blue version as well and set the same interaction, right? So while hovering, while hovering change to no background hover. So now not only when we hover over this one, it turns blue, but this one here as well. So this illustrates a function of the button. This illustrates that something is happening and uh, makes it overall more interactive. And the super powerful thing about this and also the reason why you just need to keep using components is that you can set this structure up with no interaction no interaction at all and then just for example place this menu across your website and then specify all the header interactions right here. So it's a very powerful workflow that you definitely need to use if you want to create interactivity for your components. Another example could be the accordion, right? The accordion right here is specified and set up in such a way that when you click this, the state changes to the second one and then you can go back again by clicking it. And that enables us to make this accordion actually interactive like this. We wouldn't be able to make this work without interactive components. It's also good to mention that you can create animations using interactive components. And if you want to learn more about that, go and check out this video and I will see you there. Thanks for tuning in. Leave a like if you found this video useful and see you in the next one.